I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's my prayer that God Almighty will use this message to bless each and every one of us mightily in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, if you are just joining us, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel, like and comment. Let us pray. Lord, truly, we want to follow you. But there are some of us who are being overtaken by our weaknesses, by different kind of sins that are tangled. When you came, Jesus Christ, your work was to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy sin. And you did. You destroyed the power of sin and you gave us a victory over sin. You reinstated us to a position of righteousness. You reconciled us back to God. But Lord, now we need wisdom to battle against the sins that easily entangle the sins that easily as us, Lord, help your children. We ask that you speak through me, Lord, and help us to obey you, help us to do your will all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kindly share this video with someone if you're watching. Today we want to talk about overcoming the sin that easily entangles Overcoming the sin that easily entangles. To entangle is to entwine. I want us to have a deep understanding of what the sin that easily beset means. So that we can have a fuller understanding of what it is. But before we go into that, let us read the text. Hebrews chapter 12. 1 to 4. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the chain and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. The sin that easily beset us. What is the sin that easily beset us? We're going to look at some Categories of sins that easily entangles us. The word beset or entangle is from transliterated you peristaton. It means standing well around, standing well around, and hence denotes what is near or at hand or readily occurring. It means to easily encycle. It is the scene which especially winds round us and hinders our course. It winds round us to entangle. It is a scene that we are most exposed to. It is a sin that tries to master us instead of us to be in charge. In the other way around, it wants to be in charge of our lives. That is a sin that easily entangles. The very day you give your life to Christ, all your sins are forgiven. But that day, even though you receive imputed righteousness from 
Jesus Christ and you have been reconciled to God and declared righteous and holy. Your bad characters, your bad habits, some bad habits, it could be addiction. They don't go away that same day. The day you give your life to Christ is not the day you become perfect in your character. You have just been declared righteous and you are given grace to overcome. But you still have a lot to do in your life. There are some things you are going to struggle with if care is not taken. For instance, if you have been an alcoholic, you drink a lot, you smoke, and then you're traveling and come across the gospel of Jesus Christ and you surrender and say, from today I'm not going to smoke again. I've given you my life, oh God. Take control. Even though you have resolved, when you go back home and your friends come around and start smoking, if you are not careful, you're going to struggle with the same thing you said you're not going to do again. All your partners that you used to commit adultery or fornication with, they are going to come to you and say, hey, I'm expecting your call. Some of them are going to push hard. If you are addicted to some things, definitely you are likely to go to go to struggle with them. These are some of the things that can easily entangle us. Where you grow up, your natural weaknesses, your weaknesses. You could be someone that is, you, you, you have a very high temperament. You are temperamental. You easily get angry. That's a, from childhood, that's the way you are. You have to be careful. Please listen to this message very carefully. If possible, listen to it over and over. There are some categories of sins that we need to be watchful about. The sins, number one, the sins that you are exposed to due to your natural temperament. For instance, anger. Some people have very high uh, sexual drive. It could be the way you were born or because of the way you are raised or you, uh, the things you've exposed yourself to. But everybody's sexual drive or anger is not the same. These natural temperaments could be exploited by the devil, could be exploited by your flesh and could be used against you. This is why we need to be careful after we give our lives to Jesus Christ. We need to do some things so that we can master these things that have mastered us. Me as a person, I used to have a very high anger. I remember we used to, we had a family plan 2005 and 2006, 2004, 5 and 2006. I remember we had a plan in our family, 2005 and 2006, but because of anger, 2006, on my birthday, I left everything. I left everything. I, I changed environment. And that was how the whole plans collapsed. And we were just at the verge of finalizing everything. We farmed for two years. We were already harvesting. And then I abandoned everything. I told my brother, I don't believe in money. It's not today, actually, that I see money less. I don't know why people have so much value for money. I told my brother, I don't believe in cash. I don't believe in money. That money is paper that is stamped by the government. So I left everything. I only took transport and I left. Anger used to be my problem. But... By the grace of God, God has worked on me to the point that uh, some years ago in church, a reverend, he was my neighbor in in cathedral. 
he asked me, he said, Ozana, do you even get angry anytime somebody talks to you, even the thing is offensive or not? You always, you're always laughing. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> he said, you're always laughing. Do you even get angry at all? Do you know what I did? I got into my room, knelt down, and appreciated God. I said, God, thank you. This used to be my weakness. Now it is my strength. Praise God. We are encompassed by a cloud of witnesses. People who had their own challenges. Moses was a stammerer. He had anger issue. But he is in the hall of fame. The cloud of witnesses are people who have records in the Bible. People who, though they were human beings, they strove so hard that their names were written in the book of faith. Their faith spoke for them. They were able to live above their human weaknesses. They, despite their weaknesses, they fulfilled God's will in their lives. These are people also who are living among us. They are our cloud of witnesses. Those who are among us, people who have received the grace of God and are able to navigate through these terms of life. So when you look around, when you look at the Bible, you see the cloud of witnesses. Hebrews chapter 11. When you look around you, you'll be able to see some people who have the grace of God to overcome. When you look around, encourage yourself in the Lord and tell yourself that we have a cloud of witnesses. People have once passed through this process. People have, have passed through and have survived. So I'm going to survive too. There's no need to give up. There are also the sins that easily beset us. I categorize into the group of the things you used to indulge in. Remember the first one I said, the sins you are prone to committing because of your natural temperament. And I cited the example of anger. Then this one is the sins you used to indulge in when you were in the world. It is what you used to enjoy in the world that is against the will of Christ that Satan is going to use to tempt you. The very thing you used to love, it could be women, it could be alcohol, it could be uh, clubbing. That is what Satan is going to use to tempt you. I've never done drugs before, so he will not bring drugs to me. It is what you used to enjoy that he will bring to you to entangle you because he knew that your flesh used to like it. Satan knows very well that this is the food that if your flesh sees this food, your flesh is going to like it. And then he will try to bring it to you, to use it to ensnare you. Then again, habits, habitual sins, things you used to do. The things you, you, you were, you used to do and you got addicted to. It's not just, just that you were doing them, but you got addicted to them. Satan is going to bring those things. In fact, these are things that he's going to measure on in his fight against you in order to stop the curse of God for your life. He will try to exploit these situations. And use them against you. So if you have given your life to Christ, if there are things that you were addicted to, if you have addictions, as you are giving your life to Christ, begin to hand them over and pursue them. Pursue them. And make sure you overthrow all those mountains of addictions. If not, they will become snares to you. This is very, very important. Then the next one is the things that 
are weaknesses to you. Everybody has weakness. Everybody has weakness. It could be that because you love money so much. It could be that you love food. You love food so much. It could be that you talk too much. Your weakness could be jealousy. It could be envy. It could be lust. This is not what you were born with. This is not an addiction. But this is your weakness. It could be self-pity. Oh, I'm not good enough. Every time you blame God, every time you blame yourself, every time you, you, you condemn yourself, you don't see anything good about you. That is a weakness. Satan could exploit that and use it against you. Be very careful about your weaknesses. It could be that you have a weakness of having many friends. And in course of making friends up and down, you make bad friends. You start associating with evil people. It could be that your weakness is that you love money and you don't care where it comes from. But now you are a Christian. You need to be careful. If not, you could be easily entangled. The Bible says that those who want to get rich quickly, they fall into diverse temptations, into diverse ones. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Those who want to get rich quickly, they want to be rich now. Oh, everybody has overtaken me. All my mates have overtaken me. I just want to make it. I want to make it at all costs. Be careful. That is a weakness. That can push you into the some levels of sins that you do not even dream of. Then the last one I want to talk about, the last two ones, the sins you are exposed to because of your profession, because of your family, because of your friends, because of your association. It could be that maybe in your office, you do partake in bribes. You take bribe. And now you have given your life to Jesus Christ. There is the tendency that if you are not careful, you could be entangled again. That is why I tell people, as soon as you give your life to Jesus Christ, tell those around you that you are a new man. Tell people who you are so that they won't have problem with you. Let them know. I'm born again. Tell your former girlfriends. Tell them you were born again. Tell your friends, those you used to go and smoke together. Tell each and every one of them that now I am born again. So that they will not bring some levels of temptation to you. Imagine you, you were born again. And you did not tell your girlfriends that you were born again because you are ashamed. Let me tell you, it is dangerous. You could be a snared again. When you were born again, tell your colleagues in your workplace. Tell your family members that I'm born again. I can no longer do this. This is now against my faith. If you hide your Christianity, if you hide Jesus Christ, if you cannot confess him, you will be ensnared. You will be, you will find yourself in different kind of situations that you will be tempted to compromise. And before you know it, you are entangled. You, it besets you. That sin, you fall into it and you keep falling over and over. It becomes a cycle in your life. The last one. Is a sin you commit when you are under a spiritual manipulation. 
Some people have been cursed. Some people are living under curses. Some people are living under bondages. There are spiritual powers that manipulate be people, that remote people to do evil. There are powers that could take over your mind, like contaminate the whole of the atmosphere with lust and push you to steal, even though ordinarily by yourself you will never steal. As a matter of fact, a lot of cases of addictions are driven and sustained by demonic spirits. When the devil notices your weakness, he exploits the situation. He could expand on it and attach a monitoring spirit to your life. And every point in time, he shoots thoughts into your mind. He suggests things to you. He suggests that habit to you. He pushes you. You have to be careful. There are demons. There are witchcraft spirits that push people into different kind of sins that easily entangle. And before you know it, you are into it. By the time you realize, you begin to question yourself. Am I the one that did this? But I know myself. How could I do this? I know a lot of people, when they, when they are caught, they will say, it was the devil that did it. It was. <laughs> Everybody wants to hold the devil accountable. Nobody wants to be responsible for their actions. They will say, oh, it was the devil that pushed me. It was the devil that pushed me. Now, now let me tell you, put yourself in a position that the devil will not be able to push you. That is why we need to walk by the Spirit so that you will not satisfy the desires of the flesh. But the truth is that there are demonic powers, there are demonic spirits that push people into committing sins. This is very, very common. But you should know that we have a cloud of witnesses who went through these challenges of life and they overcame. What do we need to do to overcome? I haven't explained what it means to be entangled and the sins, the categories of sins that easily beset. What do we need to do? Number one, walk in the spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Then Romans 13 verse 14 says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Walk in the Spirit. How does the Holy Spirit want, want you to live? What does God want you to do on a daily basis? Are you led by the flesh or you are allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you? If you allow the flesh to lead you, the flesh will suppress the spirit, the Holy Spirit in you, and you see yourself gratifying the desires of the flesh. But when you walk by the spirit, you first of all enthrone the government of God in your life. You do what God wants you to do. You, you were born again. You have repented. You're born again. You do the will of God. You read the Bible. You allow the Holy Spirit to be in charge of your life. You, the, Jesus Christ lives in you and lives through you. He lives in you 
and lives through you. And because he's living through you, you bear the fruits of the Spirit. It is very, very important that we make no room for the flesh. If you used to live in fornication or adultery, you don't need to make any room for the flesh. You have to be careful. Now you were born again. But there is this beautiful lady in the same office with you. And you are loose. You let your girl down. You can even be in the same room. You say, well, I'm born again. A lot of Christians expose themselves to danger. A lot of Christians expose themselves to temptation. I have done that several times. And I tell myself, I will never do it again. I remember, I think that was year 20, 20, 2000. And that's between 2000 and 2002 or three. There is this cousin of mine that came and then the mother had a quarrel with her. And then my first cousin. And then she came and then slept in my room. We slept on the same bed. And my uncle was kind of, where did she sleep? I said, she slept in my room. And he said, no, next time don't do it. Don't do it next time. Uh, you should have asked her to knock this other building where the living room is so that she would sleep there. In my mind, I was kind of, why can't I share this in bed with my cousin? I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Why, why can't I do it? She's a female. I'm a male, but she's my cousin. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Um, I so much trusted myself. Even after I started preaching, I had an adopted sister uh, in the 90s. Uh, I think that was 1998 or 99. Even to 2007, we used to sleep on the same bed. And I just see her, well, she's my sister, even though we are not blood related. I so much trusted myself that I used to do it. But do you know that? I tried that with other people and then I almost fell. Listen, let me tell you. There is this thing I usually say. In fact, I did a video which I posted on Ozana E. E. Devi, my personal YouTube channel. I said, if you don't respect your humanity, your flesh will not respect your anointing. Don't feel that, oh, I'm too anointed, I'm so strong. The Bible says, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. If you think you were standing strong, be careful. The thing I used to think that, oh, I'm strong. Nothing can happen. I'm strong. It was like I saw myself as immune. A time came that I almost fell. We have to be careful as believers. Be very, very careful. Satan is not smiling. So walk by the Spirit and make no room for the flesh. What you expose yourself to on the internet, the kind of places you go, if the place has a lot of filth, be careful where you work. Do not say, oh, I'm a believer, I'm strong, and then females or males are having close body contact with you and you let your guard down or there are people who are smoking and drinking and they are your friends and you have no problem with that. Be careful. Then number two, study God's word. Study 
the word of God. Psalm 119, verse 9 and verse 11. Where shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed hereto according to the word of God. That word have I heed in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The amount of God's word you have in your heart and the amount of God's word you put into practice will directly impact the way you live your life. And the level of strength, the level of resistance you are going to put up when you come face to face with temptation. So study the word of God. Study the word of God. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Let it be a past of you. How can a young man keep his way pure? By taking heed there to according to the word of God. When you hide the word of God in your heart, you will not easily get entangled by that sin. As a matter of fact, people fall back to fall into different kind of sins because they slack. Let me tell you, have the word of God every time. There, there are things that are bombarding us from the world, bombarding us. You open your Facebook, you look at your feed, even though you you have godly friends, Facebook suggests some things to you. You go to the internet, you see different kind of adverts, you see videos, even um, you are browsing, you see some level of um, ads popping up, you open your email, like those of us who have websites, you see spammers setting uh, different kind of things directly to you. Even many of our young girls and young boys who have Android phones, they send uh, pornographic videos and pictures to them. We are being bombarded by different kind of things every time. So you as a believer, the other way around, bombard yourself. Bombard yourself with the word of God. Have your Bible playing in the background. Play your Bible. Play music. You're traveling on a public bus, public train. You see, these are things we cannot avoid. A lot of times we have no control over them. Your workplace, they are playing some kind of music. You too bombard yourself. When I travel, a lot of times I have my earpiece with me. So when they are playing music and I have no control over it, and I, I wear my earpiece. Bombard yourself with the word of God, with music, sing, distract yourself from your environment and tune yourself to the things of God. Align your mind with the spirit. Walk in the spirit. And as you do that, you see that the power of the flesh is deadened. You mortify the deeds of the flesh. This is very, very important. Bombard yourself with the word of God. There are Christian songs, scriptures. You can download the scriptures, they sing the scriptures. I have some of them I play. Play them. Listen to the word of God. Listen to the scriptures as they are singing. When you are sleeping, set, play psalm. Play the Bible. Bombard yourself. Even when you're sleeping, your brain is not sleeping. Your brain is actively at work. Your brain stops working when you die. So even when you're sleeping, your brain is processing a lot of information, including the sound you hear. Then again, be prayerful and watchful. Be prayerful and watchful. Matthew chapter 26 verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. 
The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. When your flesh is weak, pray. When you see that you are about being entangled again, pray. When you meet with some people, maybe some people who have a lot of influence that can make you get entangled in sin, start praying in your mind. Pray. Especially as a young believer. Now your new friends are around. Your former girlfriend or your former boyfriend is around. You have no money. They want to offer you money. Pray. Resist. Be watchful. Be very, very watchful. You have to be at a light. You have to be sober. Satan is looking for someone to devour like a royally lion. He is always on the search. Sin is a power of the devil. So this is a very serious issue. Again, don't overestimate your strength. Don't overestimate your strength. A lot of us feel that we are so powerful, we are strong. Even when you see the danger ahead, you tell yourself, God is with me, you want to go. No. Many young believers under overestimate their strength. And before you know it, they are falling back to their sins. <laughs> Try to listen to old believers, those who are old in the faith. I know you are burning for the Lord, but please take precaution. Be careful. First Corinthians 10, verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh stand it, take heed lest he fall. When you think you are standing, be careful lest you fall. Be very, very careful. Satan is not playing. Be careful. Do not say, now that I'm born again, I've received strength. And then you start breaking down your boundaries. As a matter of fact, many of the scenes that easily entangle, that easily beset us, can be avoided. They can be avoided. A lot of us, some of us like to take walk. You just, you know, the city you are living in is not very, very decent in the evening. You like to take a walk in the evening when you know that all those who do evil, who dress sexy, who go, go about almost half naked are in town. And then that is when you want to go for a walk. Then you start seeing all these things. You get home. You, your brain starts processing these images. You have seen. Meanwhile, you know you have problem with lust. If you go to a function and someone is sitting close to you, and you know the person is not well dressed, if you know you will be tempted, change your seat. I remember there was a day I was going to the market, and there was this lady who barely covered herself. She wants to. She wanted to come into the same tricycle that I was sitting in. I felt so uncomfortable. So I told the, the, the driver, I said, go, I will pay for the empty seat. There are times that I preach to them. I strike a conversation, preach to them, but that day I was led never to allow her sit in the same place with me because it's just a small tricycle. I did not allow it. I paid for the empty seat. There are temptations that can be avoided. I didn't do it because I was weak, but that is how I was led. If you go to a church where people don't cover themselves well, and when you get home, instead of growing in the spirit, you are experiencing a decrease in your spiritual life. Stop going there. Stop. Avoid 
some of these things. Avoid them and you will find peace for yourself. Then again, mind your association. Who do you associate with? Do you associate with people who are in the world? Or you associate with people who belong to the body of Christ? Remember, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Don't be deceived. Don't say you were strong. So you want to go and associate with those in the world. Even when you need to preach to them, there should be some boundaries you have to maintain. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14 to 17. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship had righteousness and unrighteousness, and what communion had light and dark with darkness. We are children of light, and we have to be careful. Who do you associate with? Mind your association. Now that you have come into this kingdom, don't associate with people that will lead you easily into sin. Associate with brethren. When you are in the presence of people who are holy, there is a, even without them preaching to you, you start getting edified. If you are in the midst of people, for instance, if you are in the midst of people who are discouraged, who are sick, who are complaining, they drain your strength. They destroy your motivation to live life. So also when you are in the midst of people, who are holy, who are striving for righteousness, they see them radiating the glory of God, see them humble, see their life of humility, see them filled with the Holy Ghost. That alone can impact your life. How much more when you share fellowship with them? Mingle with God's children. A lot of people are Inhabited by demons. They could be very beautiful and handsome facially, physically, but there are demons inside of them. You have to be mindful of, us, of your association. Do not associate with people who are occupied by demons. Then again, seek help. If you are constantly being entangled if you are in the cycle of sin seek help seek help uh, let's read galatians chapter 6 1 and 2 brethren if a man be overtaken in a fault you which are spiritual we saw such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burden. It is our responsibility. Those of us who are matured in the faith, it is our responsibility to help those who are weak in the faith, those who are struggling. Seek help. Some of you don't want to seek help. And I, I also want to add, don't seek help from the wrong person. It's not everybody you see in the church that can help you. There are some who wanted help and they were taken advantage of. So. You have to be careful. You have to study the life of the person you want to seek help from. If not, he or she could take advantage of you. So you have to be careful. Today we have a missed multitude. You have to be careful. Then lastly, be positive in your mind. Be victorious in your mind. Let's look at our test again. 
Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We have a cloud of witnesses. So tell yourself that there are people who suffered these things, who struggled, who had these struggles. They overcame. I will also overcome too. I said, seek help. The last point I we talked about, seek help. There are some of them who are clouds of witnesses who had those kind of challenges. And when you seek help, you discover that you don't even have any problem. <laughs> there were people who had bigger problems, but they were able to overcome. So you tell yourself, this brother overcame. How did you overcome? Could you please share your experience with me? And then they shared their experience with you. You are encouraged. Be positive. There is no temptation that has overtaken anyone that is beyond your strength. Somebody in this world has passed through that same challenge. You are not the first person. A sister was telling me that anytime I have a problem, I know I'm not the first person that had that particular problem. So she would say, oh, I want to go online and search. Let me see how those who had these challenges were able to overcome those challenges. You can do that too. There are people who have these challenges. So don't say, oh, I'm condemned. I cannot overcome. There is no temptation that has come your way, that the Lord allows to come your way, that is able to destroy you, that is bigger than what you can overcome. But with the temptation comes a way of escape too. Let's be positive in our minds. Look at Jesus Christ. The Bible says, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. A lot of times we dwell on the sins that easily beset us. We concentrate on them. We give them so much attention. We don't Think about those who overcame. We have a cloud of witnesses. Look at the cloud of witnesses that surround us. Those who overcame. How were they able? There are books of people who share their testimonies. There are thousands of videos of people who share their testimonies. How they were able to overcome. You too can overcome. You can overcome. Be positive. When you are fighting a battle, don't see yourself as a loser. You will lose. Be positive. See yourself as a soldier. Don't fight because you have given up. But fight because you want to be victorious. Don't fight because you will lose. But fight because you will overcome. There are many who fought and overcame. Listen to this Bible verse. Listen, Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength. You have a little strength. The Lord who knows your strength knows you have a little strength. And as kept my word and has not denied my name. So even if you have little strength, the Lord knows the amount of strength you have. Keep fighting. Sometimes I move about and I tell myself, no, I can give up. I cannot give up. I have done it today. Today. I've done it today. 
I told myself, no, there is no need to give up. You have to, I was thinking about some things and I said, no, I have to continue. I will not give up. Do not fight with the mindset of self-pity. Fight because you are a victor. Remember the victory you have has been purchased by Jesus Christ. You are only passing through the process. But the victory has been won on the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ said he has overcome the world. And everyone that have the son of God overcomes the world. He that believes that Jesus Christ is the son of God overcomes the world. He that believes in his in his name overcomes the world. Our victory is a victory of Jesus Christ himself. We are the project of God. So don't give up. There are different sins that easily beset people. All of them may not have the same prescription. They may not have the same treatment. But I pray that the Holy Spirit will minister to you on how to overcome yours. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We worship you, Savior. We magnify your holy name. Thank you for your word. Lord, please minister healing to our bodies, healing to our spirits. Help us to be strong, to overcome the sins that easily beset us. There are some of us, the devil knows our weaknesses and is exploiting the situation, using a temperament against us, using our weaknesses against us, using the things we love against us, even using our loved ones against us. Lord, give us the strength to overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you overcame, we will also overcome. Because the Christians of old, the prophets of old, the believers of old, because they overcame, we will also overcome. Because there are people, despite how bad the world is, despite how corrupt the world is, there are people who are still walking in righteousness, in holiness. There are elects in this world. Lord, the same grace they have, release that grace upon us. Help us to overcome. I pray for as many who have been supporting our ministries, the Lord, you will support them. Those who have been supporting our charity organization, Father, support them. Arise, O Lord God, and take away the challenges that are entangling your children. Take them away from their lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Lord and King. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please share and like this video. Please support our ministry. Whatever the Lord lays in your heart, please support us. Not many people support us. Please support us. And the Lord God Almighty will bless you as you support us. Please share, like, and comment. And don't forget to recommend this ministry to other people. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.